All right. Oh, well, it's 11.45, so we may as well just kick it off. Because the sooner I'm done, the sooner I can get food. So, uh, hi there. I'm Mel. I'm one of the lead developers at Hide and Seek Digital. I've been a full stack developer for too long. Uh, so I'm always on the hunt for ways that help me spend more time doing the things that I love, like solving complex problems or just getting that extra caffeine boost in my day. In this talk, I'm going to take you through leveraging Cypress in Drupal to optimize your testing processes, which will save you valuable time for both yourself and the entire team. When deployment day rolls around and you find yourself as a sole developer, responsible for a considerable number of sites, testing can often become a challenging task. It actually might look something like this. All right, I've gone to dub 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 my site and it loads. Oh, thank God. All right, but I should probably test my search. Cool, done a search. It's bringing back results. Ah, oh, this testing so easy. Finally, I should probably check that the document types still work and I can download things. Awesome. Oh, that still loads. Well, thank goodness for that. My code was perfect. I'm done. So you've deployed the websites and it's working. You've tested it after all. Everything's great. You believe this to be true because it's been a few hours. No one said a word to you. So you get back to doing the things that you do best, like develop things. Now it's been a few days since that deployment. Everything's roses and when out of the blue, you get a critical support ticket labeled broken page. You open that ticket to see the attached screenshot. How'd you miss this? You checked that page. It loaded fine. <sighs> of course. In the case where there's a document body, it's got conflicting styles, and something's breaking the download links. Something like this has probably happened to everyone in the room. And look, most times it's a time crunch issue. You don't have time to test every variation of a page template, multiple searches, and then even everything that a content author has to do. Usually, we're also timesing these tests by like five or more, because many of us are working with multiple websites daily, not just Drupal. This is where Cypress can step in to give you a hand. Cypress, for those who don't know, is an end-to-end -end testing framework for web applications. It allows us to write and execute tests for our web apps quickly and efficiently. Cypress provides a user-friendly interface for writing tests and it offers various features, such as automatic waiting, real-time reloading, and built-in debugging tools to help developers create robust and reliable tests. Additionally, Cypress provides a powerful and intuitive command line interface, making integrating with continuous integration and delivery workflows easy. Basically, Cypress runs in both a headless mode and a head headed mode. Cypress is deceptively easy to set up on an existing project. It's as simple as running npm install Cypress save dev. Once installed, we have a folder structure for Cypress that contains your end-to-end -end tests. I put mine in uh, different folders, but you don't have to. You can put them all in the root. We've got fixtures. These are uh, data sets that you are not going to change, but you're going to reuse a lot. And we've got support, which contains our custom commands and also additional plugin setup. We also have a screenshots and videos folder where test outputs are generated. On the right, we have a basic Cypress config file, but we set up the EMVs with either a .env or a cypress.env file because you don't want to accidentally push up public things on your uh, repositories. Told you, Max. Cypress can test against many different browsers and versions. By default, it detects what's available in your machine, but we can either download anything missing or use Docker to also spin up the missing browsers. Cypress has an experimental support for WebKit, which is what Safari's browser engine is using, so it's a little bit more config to set it up. When we run it in a headless mode, we need to set the browsers using the browser flag by defining this or by defining this in our Cypress config setup. Speaking of setup, let's get into how we can use this to create tests. The bread and butter of everyone's first Cypress test is automating the exact situation we just went through. Cypress can visit a page and do a set list of actions and fail for us when it is unable to reach any of the steps. This kind of test is good 
to ensure that a user is able to get around the site without an issue. But this test does not care if your site is broken or styles are wrong. We're only really looking at the data stored in the HTML. So that brings us to our next type of test. Say you've gone to style a button on a document page and oh, you've tripped over and you've accidentally applied that style to all the links on the page. While this is an extreme example, we find that large sites have complex styles and it is incredibly easy, even in the days of linting and prettier, to accidentally forget that one parent class. To allow for Cypress to capture a baseline of your page and then compare it to a new screenshot, I use an open source package called Cypress Image Diff JS, which is a bit of a mouthful, uh, but basically it's a set of helper commands that'll do this all for me. So let's see it in action. It's evident that the test has failed because the new screenshot does not meet the thresholds that were set. That button is blue, we're expecting green. When the change is not as obvious as us doing a major color change, this package also provides assistance by generating and displaying diff image files. In the diff file, we see the problem elements in red. To help where things went wrong, it's also muted the rest of the site so we can quickly locate the changes as well. And the code for this test is only seven lines. Now that test before gave me an idea. One of the key teams that we work with are designers. And I'm sure I'm not the only one who's had a ticket go back and forth over the padding of components. So how can we use Cypress to help us ensure that the component we've built follows the same fail on threshold rule? That package before doesn't really help us, but it's using something called pixel match to do its smarts. So let's hook into this. Our designers use Figma as their tool of choice. There isn't any reason that this couldn't be adjusted to like Adobe XD. As long as you can get the component with API, you can generate a test like this. Here, I'm finding the button component in our design library and then storing a screenshot of it to test against. Next, we need to grab the component off the website and grab a screen to grab at that too. I'm going directly to the home page. You probably don't want to use your home page as the place where you test the buttons, but for ease of use, we're going to deal with that. Finally, we need to compare these two screenshots using pixel match. In my case, I've written a nice little reusable function here. I can call it multiple times for different outcomes. It's also for different components. You want to use it against many tests. This is kind of where that would go. Uh, the first time I'm using it, I'm simply making the return fail when the difference comes out uh, greater than 10%. And finally, after this happens, I need to be able to get that diff image file that'll show me, as before, in red, what parts are different. So our first round is a success. Yay! But then we've decided to experiment a little bit um, and added more of a border radius and changed the font from upper to lower. Now it fails and it prints out this diff image for us to see the problem areas again. I've gone through tests that solely focus on the front end of the website, but there are two parts of Drupal and one very important user group, your content authors. And we can use Cypress to ensure that they can still do all the things that they need to do. First off, we want to create our own custom Cypress commands, so we can use this to run trash commands. I've made this one that'll create ourselves some dummy users. Just want to note the drush path here because I want to be able to run my test locally and on my hosting provider of choice, I need to be able to switch paths from Lando drush to say platform drush. Uh, it really depends on where you need to call it from. With this custom command, I call it in my tests, creating the user and ensuring they can still log into the site without an issue. But Content author is going to probably want to publish content. So we can write a test that will follow a content author's journey to create this. In my case, I'm doing this as an article. Then we need to check that the page was created successfully. And then we need to remove it when we're done, because you probably don't want to have 100 test articles on your site. So we should all be getting a good idea of how this all works at this point. Cypress, everything is broken into steps. Our first round. We're creating our dummy user against, uh, again with that command from before, logging them into the site, and then we want to start creating an article. 
And I've created some dummy data that I've stored in a fixture because I want to use that again and again. Finally, once publishing, we need to check that the page contains the title. And if so, we're going to delete it. Currently, I've only gone through uh, what I've gone through only really helps an individual. There are no rules in place to have your team also use these tests. And as Dom once said many times in the Fast and Furious movies, we don't turn our backs on family. So, how do we include this as part of our build? And I'm going to go more into pass here, uh, but for SAS users, where there's a will, there is a way. I'm going to use GitHub Actions as an example for this, but all repo hosts have a version of this. Um, having Cypress run for your team can be as simple as adding a GitHub action that simply changes the base URL and drush path to your development server. In here, I'm simply saying on each push to stage, I want to run my Cypress test. But in this case, if I said I only want to run the button one, removing that spec means that all tests will run. Finally, I want to save the um, Cypress output when we're all said and done, as this will help us find the errors as we run on a headless mode in a visual way. Now, Cypress also has this thing called Cypress Dashboard, uh, and essentially you can hook it up and it will store those uh, videos and images for you. It costs money once you get past the free tier, and I'm very frugal, so I like to find free ways to do things. Now, um, as with many things in life, this is just one way to run Cypress for teams. Uh, there's about a million ways that we could handle doing this. Another way would be to include your Cypress test as part of the build pipeline run, and that way, if they were to fail on stage, your build wouldn't go out at all. That might be really annoying if the build fails because you've moved a pixel five, um, five to the left, uh, but it saves you if we've just destroyed an entire page. Um, well, now that we've got our teams using the tests, that's great. How do we then use this to justify the dreaded change release requests? Cypress also has a handy plugin called the Cypress Mocha Awesome Reporter, and it gives us the ability to take these tests and export them out as HTML reports. Now, you're probably thinking, I can't upload a whole HTML microsite to my change request release. Well, we can use Puppeteer to then look at that HTML and generate it out as a PDF file, which you can then connect to your request. Now you have something to attach as additional proof of the stability of your build, because sometimes word of mouth is Uh, all the tests that we've gone through today can be found on my GitHub. I hope this gives you the kickstart that you need to get some automated testing in your Drupal projects. Just a couple of things that we need to note. Um, unfortunately, your tests are only as smart as you write them. I know, weird. Uh, but the b benefits of that is because the web things that we work on change every single day, your testing requirements change every single day. You're only having to adjust those tests to meet the needs. And as a human, it's really easy to forget steps, but a test, an automated test isn't going to forget something. It's going to do exactly what it's told. And a super unfun fact is uh, Cypress 12 is not data that ChatGPT has a lot of right now, so it tends to spit out the wrong answers if you use it. Uh, but apparently yesterday, it's just recently allowed itself to open itself to the web in Australia, so it can actually search things now. Cool. Any questions? The things that I've noticed with it, uh, so basically was the question was, have I used Cypress with web forms? And it's, yes, I have. The only con that I have with it is there's a lot of awaits because you kind of have to wait. If you're doing like Ajax or something, you have to wait for things to happen. And depends on how fast you're, like, what you're using your internet speed with because you put a wait for like one second, that might help 99% of the times, but then you have that one time where it's going to go over just a little bit and just go off that threshold. It'll come back and fail. It's like front end and like the back end stuff because you can use it to do, um, it's not like uh, Jest, where you write like unit tests or anything like that. It's solely focused on the user journey more than, fun yeah, 